How much does Arizona spend on public education? Well, it depends on how you do the math. According to several sources, Arizona is at or near the bottom in national rankings for per pupil funding. Arizona spends about $6,000 per student compared to a national average of more than $9,000. Meanwhile, the Goldwater Institute puts Arizona's K-12 funding at about $9,500 per student. Here to explain the differences are Matthew Ladner, Vice President of Research for the Goldwater Institute, the conservative think tank, and Chuck Essigs of the Arizona Association of School Business Officials. Thank you both for joining us on Horizon. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Matt, how much does Arizona spend per pupil in education, and how did you get the number? Well, I can tell you how much revenue per pupil they get. Um, if you look at the superintendent's annual financial report, it gives the total revenue from all sources of about $9.2 billion. If you divide that by the number of kids, which they identify as about 950,000 going to district schools, divide those two numbers, you get about $9,700 total revenue from all sources, federal, state, and local per pupil. Uh, it's, a, it's a substantially higher number than often gets reported. Okay, I want to come back to that in a second, but I want to ask you, how much do we spend per pupil? Uh, we do spend $9,500 if you add in all the things that get added in that report. But when you look at national studies, the National Center for Education Statistics, Education Week, which is considered the gold standard for reporting, uh, the Ar uh, American Legislative Exchange Council, uh, the NEA, all of those studies, which look at all the states, including Arizona, compare them on a apples to apples, orange to orange standard. The Arizona is anywhere from 62 to 6,500 dollars per pupil for operational expenses. What drives that 9,500 dollar number is when you bring in capital expenses, self-insurance accounts, uh, student funds, revenues that schools do have, but really aren't used on a day-to-day -day basis to educate students. Is there not a difference between capital expenditures and revenues and such and classroom teaching? There is. Um, now, if you do the same procedure I just described to you for charter schools, you look at their total revenue divided by their total number of students, you get a figure about $7,800 per pupil. Um, and that's the same sort of all-in procedure. Uh, public schools get, uh, you know, easier, well, they actually get state funding for facilities while charter schools don't. I mean, we use the facilities for an educational purpose. Um, if school districts are going to take facility funding, then in my opinion, they ought to count it in their uh, you know, expenditure and revenue per pupil figures. Why not include capital expenditures and revenues and such? If you include that in the expenditures that other states are reporting. So if you want to take the $9,500 figure for Arizona, which still is below the national average just to operate schools, and that includes all the capital expenditures. If you bring in those capital expenditures and all those other expenses from other states, we're still going to be. 48th or 49th, because their spending is not going to be $9,500 anymore. It's going to be, on an average, eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000, because you're including capital in their expenditures also. Respond to that. Compare and contrast where we are all in compared to other sure. states all in. I, I, I can't tell you that, because I don't know what the other states are doing. I mean, to get these figures, you really have to dig into the guts of their reports to figure out what, what I consider to be an accurate number. So. I mean, my feeling is is that we've got about 9,700 per kid all in for, for district schools here. We've got about 7,800, according to the financial report, for charter schools. Uh, the Goldwater Institute did a survey of private schools in the state, 146 private schools from across the state. We found an average cost uh, of about 5,500 per. And back in, say, 1960, according to the Digest for Education Statistics, Spending per pupil in Arizona was $404 per pupil. That's, that's current spending, not including capital. Uh, you adjust that for inflation, that's about $2,800 per pupil. So I don't think it's important to know how we compare to kids, how much they spend in Alaska. I don't think it can, you know, I think the so point if we, is. if we are ranked low, you don't think that's important? What I think is important is, is to recognize that, that our schools are getting a substantial amount of money per pupil. $9,700 is a lot higher than $7,800 and it's a lot higher than the average private school spending. The point is, is that we need to do as best we can with the resources that we have available. Not necessarily kind of wallowing in self-pity that we don't spend as much as Massachusetts. Now, how important really is it in per pupil spending? Aren't results, academic results, what we're going for here? Uh, yes. 
But it's what, what will those additional dollars buy? If Arizona is 49th out of 50, the only state below us is Utah in operational expenses, obviously we can't buy all the things that other states can buy. We have the second largest class size in the country. We have 24 students on average per class, where the national average is probably closer to 15. So you have to give up something by not having those resources. And just giving schools more money won't make them better. But if they use that money appropriately, there was an excellent report by the Rodell Foundation, Lead with Five, which say, what are the five things that Arizona needs to do with extra dollars to really have adequate schools for all children? And those included full-day kindergarten, which we have, uh, performance pay and training for teachers, smaller class size, smaller schools, and individual tutoring for kids who are struggling. So if you use the money appropriately, it's like any business. Just bringing in more revenue doesn't make your business more efficient. If you use the money appropriately, it does. Judging from your last response and what you said so far, do I infer that you believe that we spend too much on public education? Uh, that's not really what I'm interested in. I mean, I wouldn't say that even. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a graduate of public schools. My own children attend Arizona public schools, okay? I would want public schools to succeed. The point is, if you look around the country, you can look at an example like Florida, which is also ranked low on, on these comparisons of, of state to state. Florida got very serious about education reform starting in 1998, and 10 years later, on the national test and, and the nation's report card, fourth grade reading, which is critical, their free and reduced lunch eligible children are outscoring the statewide average for all children here in Arizona. Okay. That's not spending a lot. It's also with a dem difficult demographic profile, similar to what we have here in Arizona. They're getting more bang for the buck, and that's critical because we have a lot of other demands on public dollars in the state. We have health care, higher education, transportation, criminal justice. We have a $3 billion deficit, right? We're not going to spend our way to high quality schools, so we need to focus more on, you know, bang for buck. How do you explain a success like that in Florida and not similar success here? Well, first, Florida's not 49th. Florida spends more per pupil than we do. I don't have those numbers right now, but they aren't at the bottom. Uh, and you can all, you know, I, and I, I do think one of the things important is we compete with all, all for students all across the country. So we want to make sure that we have adequate services so when business and companies move here, they're getting those good services. So can, we, can Arizona schools improve? Of course they can. But some of the improvements that people want, lowering class size, cost money, a lot of dollars. There's been a lot of evidence over the last 40 years to suggest that, that lowering class size is not. It's an expensive reform that actually does not deliver results. Uh, Florida may not be 49th, but they might be they're 40 something. And, um, by having a rigorous attention to you know bottom line results, you can actually get them. You can drop your childhood literacy rate 36% in 10 years the way Florida did, but you, you, you can't do it unless you get very serious about it. 30 seconds left. When, anytime it gets over 100 degrees, everybody starts distorting the school spending pictures in Arizona. So this always happens this time of the year. All of the national studies show that we're 49th out of 50. Uh, and we need to do better in, in how we spend our money, but we also need to have adequate resources to be able to do the job that's needed for all students. And we need adequate resources to get a final number so we can all agree on what the heck we're talking about <laughs> here. But it's nice to see the battling numbers, and uh, thank you so much for joining us on Horizon. Thank you. Thank you.